Hi, this is Carrie Cooper for Guitar Centre's Focus on Rock. Now, a recording studio is never simply a workspace. It starts with a musician's vision, a dream to become the ultimate haven for the ultimate creative output possible, often leaving a legacy that long outlives their founders. And exactly that can be said of New York's Electric Lady Studios, thanks to one Jimi Hendrix 45 years ago. Tragically, the official launch party for the studio on the night of the 26th of August 1970 would be the last time Hendrix would see the studio, having been found dead in London less than four weeks later. There was often a perception of Hendrix, probably because of his free and powerful stage performances, that he was a lot more gregarious and confident than he really was. Hendrix had a dream for Electric Lady, which he shyly shared with Patti Smith while they met on the stairs of the studio's launch. Patti, an unknown poet at the time, said, When I told him, Hendrix, I was too chicken to go in, he laughed softly and said that, contrary to what people might think, he was shy and parties made him nervous. He spent a little time with me on the stairs and told me of his vision of what he wanted to do with the studio. He dreamed of amassing musicians from all over the world in Woodstock and they would sit in a field in a circle and play and play. It didn't matter what key or tempo or what melody, they would keep on playing through their discordance until they found a common language. Eventually, they'd record this abstract universal language of music in his new studio. The language of peace, you dig? I did. Before Electric Lady Studios were born, Hendrix would use that basement space as a hangout, a place to meet friends and jam. There had been plans for the space to be turned into a nightclub, but Eddie Kramer quickly turned the situation around, and before long they were building Jimmy a very special studio. So, architect John Stork was given the challenge to design this incredibly special project, under the very specific guidance of Hendrix himself and his dream recording studio vision. Studio technology aside, Hendrix was very certain that he wanted a soft feel to the studios, curvy and rounded, neutral walls with light softly changing its colour and atmosphere. He would often consult the one and only Les Paul over the phone, finding the very best way to position his equipment and instruments in order to make the most of the space. So now the building costs were mounting up, and Hendrix had to tour through much of the project just in order to keep up with those bills. He even had to borrow $300,000 in order to make up the $1 million total that Electric Lady Studios took to build. It became a recording studio that blew out any before it and set a new template for the perfect rock-producing setting. Although Jimi Hendrix never got to spend all the years creating in there that he had hoped, other megastars sure have kept the creative fires burning. Led Zeppelin, The Rolling Stones, Bob Dylan, Kiss, Hall & Oates and U2, to name but a few, have been lucky enough to record there, ensuring Hendrix's Electric Lady Studios vision remained alive and intact. This is Carrie Cooper for Guitar Center's Focus on Rock. Shop for the greatest selection of music gear on earth in store or at guitarcenter.com.